Welcome everybody, welcome to 10 Minute Reviews. Jason here bringing you today's video. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to check the links down below for links to today's book and anything else that might be applicable. I could use the traffic through the, the Amazon link, so I definitely appreciate it. The contest is obviously over, it was over almost a month ago. Uh, I'm sending out the emails right now to the winners. I do have more signed books, so I will be doing more, more contests coming up. And thank you very much to our patrons. I'll be sending out those prize winners as well. And otherwise, let's get into today's video. So for today's, today's video, I'm going to talk about an author I've talked about in the past, but not too much. I had just one or two books so far. Kirk Mason. Might have been more, actually. He's got a lot of different books out. Uh, but Kirk Mason. And this, this book is a, a modern urban fantasy type book-ish um, also falling up, uh, within the, the harem lit subgenre or, it's a, or adult romance or whatever you want to call it. But it's got some spiciness in it. So this this book is called Big City Goth. Big City Goth. GF. Big City Goth Girlfriend. Um, and this is definitely one where I now know where Kirk Mason's proclivities happen to lie because he talks a lot about in, in this particular book he pretty much, there's entire paragraphs devoted, almost to an annoying level how frequently it happens, devoted to massive butt and massive thick thighs. So we now know what Kirk Mason's proclivities are. Could have done without those except for one or two quick little little blurbs. Could also be because it's not necessarily my thing. But it didn't really add anything to the story beyond being a description of, of somebody. So... Once we got past that, I really wish he could have just stayed past that. But the book itself, we are dealing with Michael. Michael is the main character, and Michael is basically sort of an Indiana Jones type of, of person. His uncle owns a antique slash relic type of, of store, and he sends Michael out to basically rob tombs, whatever it may be, of treasures, and, and historical items and things along those lines. So he's got to dodge traps, dodge big rolling stones, fire spitting traps, acid traps, magical traps, zombies, skeletons, everything and anything. And that's that's how we we're introduced to Michael as his little little uh, Indiana Jones slash Tomb Raider sort of, of of gig, and him having a a family member, and a. Uh, what was that? Nephew, I believe it was. Nephew or cousin. I think it was a nephew uh, that was trying out and just could not handle the job. Michael does end up having to fire him. But then something happens to Michael's uncle. Michael's uncle is uh, injured. I don't believe he's killed. No, correct. He's not killed. He is He is injured. And it. he is also a racist, as it turns out. His assistant is a dark elf or half dark elf um, with basically large lower half let's just say um but he is very very racist towards her but she has difficulties holding a job so and getting a job so she can't really let this one go and her name is serena now when something happens to his uncle michael comes to the store comes to the store to help run it runs into serena she's expecting michael to be his uncle all over again and of course he's not a um, little bit better of a person and through time some clever interactions and some some clever thought processes on Michael's part he does manage to build a little bit of a rapport with her despite the fact that they have some very interesting disagreements because she is all about preserving the history and how how these items these magical items these artifacts belong to their cultures whereas Michael is pretty much just grave robbing and selling them. so they have their their little uh, arguments about those uh, here and there, but for the most part they end up being pretty fast friends and then something happens to that nephew that uh, that Michael had fired, so Michael now has to go look into that because it's family and that's sort of what he, he kind of has to do, and so looking into that, he gets Serena to help him, so they kind of, one of the things that I find fairly fairly amusing in this story, in this book, is that the bookstore itself, the bit, not bookstore, the, the, uh, the, the store itself, kind of gets sort of ignored a lot. And they even mentioned it, like, man, we really should have opened the store. I can't believe we shouldn't be closing so early or we shouldn't be closing for four hours in the middle of the day kind of stuff. But they are pretty much off doing their own things and more and looking into what's going on with 
with his nephew, what happened to his nephew, what is this thing, this problem that came up, came about because of whatever may have happened to to the nephew. And that kind of turns into a big thing. Serena can help. She's got some connections. And again, being a dark elf, she has her own little magic and some minor combat capabilities, although not quite to the level of Michael. Now, as we're going along with this, we, we also learn a little bit more about this kingdom that they live in. And, and I would say it's almost... Uh, hard to say exactly what kind of technological time frame we're looking at, be it the early 1900s, late 1800s, or even modern times. I don't think it's modern times-ish, but we learn a lot more about this kingdom, learn a lot more about magic, learn a lot more about the history of this world that, that, he's, that Kirk has managed to build. And then we also learn that there's a history behind Michael. So I, I could tell that Mason is hoping to kick this off into a series, and I don't know. If if he comes out with a book two, I am definitely going to read it uh, just to see because I enjoyed this one and, and hopefully the second one is just as good, if not better, and it could keep on moving because Michael and his family, let's just say they are hiding a secret and it's a secret that kind of makes them somewhat, not powerful, but notorious and gives them a lot of leeway and ability that I think could get interesting with, with any further books. So if you guys are interested in... I can't even really think of a genre to pin, pigeonhole this one into, but if you've watched most of our videos, you probably would be interested in this. Go check out Big City Goth Girlfriend. Yes, the title is terrible for, for such a good book. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Bye now.